Hey everybody, welcome back to another Judgment Commentary of Nisei Monogatari, but today we're going to be checking out episode 5, part 5 of the Karen B arc. And last time, we got to see the return of Shinobu, who after months of absence finally decided to reappear once again. And not only that, but she's talking too. There are all of Baki Monogatari, Shinobu did not speak and she didn't really do anything all the way up until the very end, and now she's back and quite talkative again, just like she was during Kizu Monogatari. She and Araragi had a very fascinating discussion about the current circumstance, and Shinobu was able to provide him with some details about what's going on with Karen, that being that it's a weird fire bee thing, which you probably could have predicted by now, but it stung her, and it's causing her to suffer from intense fevers, and if untreated, her body heat's going to raise so high that it'll probably just end up killing her. They're not sure about what they can do to stop it as of yet, but I'm sure they'll figure it out. Now, when it comes to the general nature of that scene with Araragi and Shinobu, with the benefit of hindsight and some very helpful comments, it's clear that that scene did serve a lot more narrative purpose than one might initially assume, in that it provides interesting contrast, because it was similar in many ways to that scene with Suruga. Remember when Araragi burst in on her and it was very uncomfortable for him? Well, this wasn't anything like that, because despite them being in a similar circumstance, Araragi was not uncomfortable. He was very chill and casual about the whole thing. Shinobu as well. And that does speak a lot for the characters now they see each other in that, you know, they're very close and connected. They're, you know, almost two sides of the same coin type of thing. So them being in this situation, if you can even call it a situation, is, you know, not that big of a deal for them. That they can just bathe right next to each other and they don't think anything of it. So it does certainly help to show that and it did a masterful job of conveying that because honestly, the casual nature of the scene did do wonders for developing that about them, even if, yeah, there were some shots that were a bit more sensual than I would have liked, but hey, that's Monogatari, they do that all the time, but even still, there was never any direct emphasis, like, say, with Suruga, the camera was never focused on specific parts of her, like with Suruga, and Araragi's eyes were never, like, scanning her up and down in a similar fashion, his perspective was always more static. Sure, there were some more sensual things in frame at certain points, but it was never the central focal point of the shot, so it means that Araragi is not seeing her in that way like he did with Suruga. So yeah, despite the fact that the scene was still uncomfortable just in principle, it did do a lot to establish character stuff, and I can always appreciate that. And the contrast between that and the Suruga scene, it's, it's pretty brilliant, I gotta say. And honestly, despite the fact that I said I had to ignore a lot of that to pay attention to the dialogue, it wasn't that difficult to do because again, they never centered the focus on that. It was just always in the background, casually occurring on the sidelines. So it wasn't at all hard to focus on the dialogue, especially because their discussion was actually pretty engaging, all things considered. So overall, definitely not a simple fan service scene by any stretch. It did establish a lot of narrative purpose, so... It's a lot better from that perspective. So, anyway, enough rambling on for no reason. Let us just begin. We got a water droplet. Wow, what a fascinating episode. <laughs> One of the most engaging of Nisei so far. I mean, Kaiki, he's just someone I'm loving to hate right now, just because he's so terrible. He's just, I can't even put it into words, man. Just how much he wants to validate doing these horrible things just because it gets him money. It's like, how can you do that? Like, like he, he sells to middle schoolers specifically because they're easier to dupe. And he's perfectly fine with that. They're just an easier mark, so he goes for it. Wow, what a coward. <laughs> what a wimp, what a loser. He won't even, 
He won't even try to take on more difficult marks. He wants to try to rip off somebody where it'll be pathetically easy to do so. Not only is he greedy, he's lazy. <laughs> the ultimate combination of the deadly sins. <laughs> Greed and sloth all rolled up into one. Ain't that nice. But man, he really talked her into that position. She could have just punched him. Probably still wouldn't have worked out. I doubt that he was just gonna let that happen, but there's a possibility that had she acted, she would have been able to just kick him in the face because there's a chance she wasn't counting on her doing that. He was probably hoping that she would just keep letting him talk so that he could wear down her guard and it worked. Yeah, this was a pretty straightforward episode for the most part, providing some answers about Kaiki, a lot of answers about him really, and about the whole situation. Like the timeline of events is just that Kaiki's going around the middle school, selling weird spells and charms to, to kids, fully expecting them to not work so that they can, you know, help them with their problems. And then of course, Karen, being the warrior of justice that she is, baits him into letting her in there to sell her some stuff only so that she could clock him in the face for his heinous crimes. But through the fine art of speaking, he was able to wear down her confidence enough that he could walk right up to her, bop, and that was it. Although interestingly, he chalked that up to her imagination that she was, it was a placebo, that him saying, oh, I'm gonna get, here's, here's a gift, it's a bee, poking her in the head and then she collapses. He talked about it as if he believed it wasn't real. That it was through her own creativity that she thought it was real that made it occur. Although he did also say that once the poison sets in, she'll be able to get up and walk around, so... It's a little contrary to that, but... Maybe that's just his way of saying, you know, once your body realizes that nothing's actually happening, you can leave, but... Although he also did say to call for help. Weird. Placebos are strong, man, so I guess it's maybe he just thought it was that powerful of an effect. But of course it was real, so did he just unintentionally incite that to happen without knowing that it was real? Thinking that it was fake? Or does he know it's real and is just putting on an act? So far, Kaiki has to be one of the most fascinating of antagonists that the Monogatari series has seen because before this, when it comes to antagonists, there weren't actually that many. <laughs> I mean, in Kizu, we got the three vampire hunters, but we didn't get a lot of info on those guys, on what motivated them and drove them, but we got a lot for Kaiki. And he's a, he's a real interesting guy. And now, to try and take the illness from his sister, he must kiss her. Quite. I don't think he's had a chance to kiss very many other people before this, so that's kind of sad, but <laughs> all right. If that's the way they're going to play it, then I guess that's just what we're going to have to be here for. Or maybe not. Who knows? Maybe it's just on the cheek. He didn't say where. He just said kiss. Mm. All right. Anyway, guys, I guess that's going to be it for now, but thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. Subscribe to update it on more. That'd be great. Let me know what you thought of the episode as well. Any fascinating insights you'd like to inform me of. That would be cool. Be getting a lot of really nice comments on the, the Patreon videos, at least, so far, about, you know, thematic stuff. And it's really interesting to read. It gives a lot more depth into the artistic side of this series. And the artistic side is uh, quite a major part of it. But yeah, this was a good one. I can't wait to check out the next one. I hope to do that tomorrow. I hope to keep getting these out quicker because admittedly I've been really slow at it and I apologize. I've been trying, but some things get in the way. Sometimes I get tired and I just uh, can't do it, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try harder to keep getting these out because Nisei Monogatari has had very many fascinating elements so far and this one seals the deal even further, so. Honestly, I really want to check out the next one. And I hope you guys are excited for that as well. But for now, this is it. Hope to catch you next time. Till then, I will see you guys all later.